world, the, the average food a person is eating is making the body work the hardest and getting very little out of it. It's exactly opposite of the way it should be. I discussed these things in my in the Formula for Health book, but uh, in this daylight diet book, which I want to talk about today, it's not just what we're eating, but also the time we're eating. I mean, even if you do not go on a healthy food diet, if you just stop eating at nighttime, you're going to show a tremendous difference in your health. The, per the person I learned about this book from, or this concept from, number one was Yahweh, because it's in the Bible. Somebody says, show me the Bible where it says you shouldn't eat late. And I say, if, uh, if our Creator wanted us to eat late at night, He would have made fruits and vegetables glow in the dark. <laughs> we all we have all this uh, artificial electricity. We can't see apples on a tree at nighttime or oranges. You know, it's very difficult unless the moon's out or something. So, and, and, and it's just the way the body works. There's a lot of studies, a lot of the, the organs and the way that, that from, from like 8 o'clock at night to 6 in the morning, that's when your body's naturally cleansing if you let it, if you're not eating. The morning time it's detoxifying, and well, night time is tough. Detoxifying, and, and then it's cleansing, and then it's break. There's a look at Asian chart on organs and, and the times and the different times and the ways it works with the sun and the moon. And I talked about it, but there was this fellow named uh, De Dale Lewis. Dale Lewis. He has a nice big beard. Uh, from his books in the 1800s. Uh, he actually was a temperance teacher. He taught about temperance, about not drinking alcohol at all, which uh, I'm in full agreement with. But he also taught, he has a book uh, that talked about the time we eat our food. And this man ate meat, he ate every bad thing you could think of. But he was talking about the time we eat it, not to eat late at night. And also what uh, Raul was saying earlier about intermediate fasting, not to eat a whole bunch of small meals, to eat set amount of times. We don't need to eat more than two times a day. Originally, I have a whole history of dinner, uh, the meals in here, there were only two meals a day. There was breakfast and there was dinner. And dinner used to be served at noon time, or maybe early in the afternoon. That's why you see some Italian families in Brooklyn on Sunday afternoon, they only eat dinner at noon time or something. And it means to dine, that was the biggest meal of the day. Some people would eat supper, which was a very small meal, like a soup or something, uh, late at night. But the concept was, and the teaching always was, uh, going to sleep on an empty stomach is key. Going to sleep on an empty stomach. Eating your biggest meal early in the day and take the whole day to eat. You got to work it off, and then you're going to sleep on an empty stomach. It's a very bad habit to eat late at night. And the doctors realize this, and they realize how many problems we have today. We have more people that are obese today than ever before, while at the same time we have more books about obesity than ever before and how to overcome it. It's all late night eating. That is the issue. And so instead of the doctors saying, hey, people, stop eating late at night, what do they say? They have something called late night eating disorder. And now they <laughs> give people an excuse to eat late at night. People come up to me and say, I know you're saying don't eat late, but I can't help it. Why not? The doctor said I have this disorder. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and to make it worse, sometimes the doctor will give them medication and say, make sure you take this medication at these hours, and many times it's nighttime, and take it with food. And to show you how disciplined people are and dedicated they are to what they're doing, some people will wake up in the middle of the night and take their medication and make sure they're taking food because the doctor told them to do it. So late night eating disorder has become a big problem, and I would suggest if everyone cut down eating late at night and going to sleep on a stomach that hasn't had food for maybe four to five to six hours, uh, not only will you adjust, and I teach you in the book how to adjust and do that, because if you're getting up at 11 in the morning and not eating your first meal to one, yes, you are going to be hungry at night time. But if you get in the habit of getting up early and eating early and eating throughout the day, you're not going to be hungry at night time once you break that habit of eating at night time. So late night eating disorder, it's, it's a very bad practice. I would say it's probably the second worst thing you can do for your health is to uh, get up in the middle of the night uh, and, and, and eat. Uh, it, it's just a, it's a very unhealthy thing. There's even something called sleep eating disorder. This is a serious thing. I thought it was a joke when I first heard it. Like <coughs> people literally getting up in the middle of the night, not waking up, but getting up in the middle of the night and sleepwalking to the refrigerator and eating. <laughs> There's only one thing I can think of that's more dangerous than getting up in the middle of the night and eating and not knowing it. You know what that is? That's getting up in the middle of the night and eating and knowing it. 
<laughs> and that's what so many people do on a regular basis. There's no excuse for this. Uh, we have to stop eating late at night. And, and, and since I've been practicing that, it's I made a tremendous impact on my health. I also have a DVD on this topic. And the, one of the best hints I have for it, if you're not eating late at night, is get rid of the things that make you eat late at night. The TV set. I'm very against TV. My rule is if I'm not on it, don't watch it. <laughs> Everything on that TV is just the, well, the advertisements and all this other stuff. It's not, it's not, it's, it, they're trained. You know, there's a reason why they call it programming. They're trained to teach you to do what they want you to do. And the majority of commercials out there are either a food or a drug. Yeah. And both companies work hand in hand many times, they're part of the same company a food or a drug. So uh, we got to get away from the program. And we got to get back into just doing things that you know, that we were designed to do. The, the foods we were designed to eat were, were fruitorous, uh, herbivore creatures. We're not, we're not uh, carnivores. And just because you can get away with something doesn't mean you should keep doing it when you find out it's bad for you. So write that down and remember that. Just because you can get away with doing something doesn't mean it's, uh, it's good for you and you can keep doing it. You're not going to escape uh, the, the laws of nature that says if you're eating this, eventually it's going to catch up to you and you're creating a big problem. A big problem. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, Raul talked about um, Hippocrates hallucinating the park uh, feeding people between 10 and 6. Two times. What would you recommend? Yeah, I do recommend a two time a day diet. In uh, see, when the days are longer, the, the food, food that's in season, which is another thing to be eating, is in season. So when the days are longer and you're eating in season, uh, in the summertime the foods are lighter, so you can eat more, and the days are longer. So a creator makes no mistake. In the winter time, the foods that grow naturally are heavier, root vegetables and things like this. The days are shorter, so you eat less. So I would suggest, like I do in the book, in the winter time, eat two meals a day, and in the summertime, you can get it with a third meal. And I, I, I'm not an advocate of snacking in between meals. I don't think it's a healthy uh, practice to, to have. Uh, and now as for Hippocrates, they did not design the program uh, for intermittent fasting. They did not design it for, uh, for, for the particular times. They designed it for people that are used to eating a standard American diet to get used to making the transition to even a healthier diet. And one part of it is not grazing all day and eating two main meals a day. So that's one thing. The other thing is uh, the, you know, what they're dealing with, people that are already sick and so on, and also people schedules and coming there and so on. The ideal schedule would be, from a biblical perspective, uh, is to eat two times a day. And the way they did it in the scriptures was the third and ninth hour of daylight. And uh, ancient traditional medicine of all cultures around the world and when you look at the organ charts, we'll agree that the third hour and the ninth hour of daylight for digestion are the best times to eat our foods. The third hour of daylight. Now somebody would say, well, what, do you, what, what is that? I can't say it's 7 and 3 o'clock because it's always going to change unless you live directly on the equator. Every single day, those times are going to be different by slightly and by season dramatically. See, there's not 24 hours in, uh, I mean, there's 24 hours in a day, as, as it says in the scripture. It's 12 hours a day, 12 hours of the night. But how many minutes are in an hour? And we say 60. Well, why did we get that idea? There's not 60 minutes an hour. If you're really following time, not according to uh, the man-made clock, which sometimes we have to for appointments and everything, but you have to take the sunrise and sunset and divide that by 12 to determine how many minutes are in an hour for that particular season. And only by doing that can you find out when the true third and ninth hour is. And again, from today to tomorrow, it's not going to be a big difference. It might be 30 seconds to a minute off. But from right now to the summertime, you could be an hour off. So that's why I don't say, oh, it's the same time for everyone. It's usually between 7 and 9 o'clock in the morning and, uh, and 2 and 4 o'clock in the evening as the ideal time to eat for digestion. Based if you're sleeping on a normal pattern or, or, or a good pattern of going to sleep as close as possible when the sun goes down and getting when it comes up. Because if you're getting up at 11 o'clock, eating at 7, it's not going to work for you. So you want to add structure to your life, and it's not only with your diet, it's also with your work. 
If you have a nighttime job, there's a reason why they call it the graveyard shift. <laughs> it's, it's not a healthy thing to do to be working late at night. If you go to the gym or exercise, uh, it's more natural to do that in the light time and in daylight hours, just as if you were in nature exercising. Uh, if you're in the forest or if you're in the desert, most likely at nighttime you wouldn't be looking to uh, doing too much physical activity. You'd be doing the daytime. And I know because of electricity and because of the time and everything else, we've gotten so far away from that. But the closer we get to that, the better. I used to tell people, eat as close to nature as possible and the better off you're going to be. But I had to change that up because people would be like, you mean I can eat a candy bar in the park? And I'm like, no, that's not what I mean. <laughs> you want to think about it. If you were in nature, uh, like something called natural hygiene, you know, what would you be doing? And even in the food, the food combining, you know, some things don't go well together. Well, you wouldn't be eating them together in nature. So wherever there's orange trees, for example, you'd find around those orange trees more orange trees. You won't find apple trees and an orange tree growing in the same area. I do not eat oranges and apples in the same meal. They don't digest well together. It's a bad food combining uh, thing. I, I, I forgot my food combining charts. I had a ton of them to bring. Uh, you'll have to come back to the next retreat for that. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, so you want to follow food combining because think about nature. What grows in the same areas or what doesn't? And the seasons of things growing. I try not to get produce from other countries because uh, I don't know what they're doing and how they're doing it and all like that, but the seasons of those produce. So I know living here in Florida, mangoes grow in the summertime. And they're delicious. And even if I buy them in the summertime and freeze them, at least I pick them in the summertime and I know where they're coming from and so on. I don't trust mangoes from like Ecuador that, or, or some other country around the world that were grown. Who knows how long they were sitting and they were picked unripe as well. It's just not, it's good, you know, it's, it's good to know where your food's coming from. And, yeah, so that's good. And, well, so, Rita teaches a lot of this stuff, she's learned a lot of this stuff in her book, in the front of her book, in the back of her book. It goes through all this stuff, it covers all these different things. Uh, for those of you that took the Dr. Shindell's blood test, when you get the results, uh, if you, uh, I do consultations. I pretty much talk to anyone for five minutes if I if I get the chance to call you. But I do consultations if you want to do that longer, just to go over them as well. I don't know the everything you know he knows from the uh, nutritional and from the vitamins he recommends and so on standpoint. When you get that test back and if he says you need a thousand dollars worth of supplements, uh, I can tell you that just correct some things in your diet where you won't need that many. So, so that'll be a big help. If between now and the next time you see me, uh, somehow I die, don't think the diet didn't work. You know, the diet works. You know, when I tell you I know people that want to roll through diet and they die, uh, half of the people I interviewed in my book died. I did that book 20 years ago. And many of them didn't live any longer than the average person eating McDonald's. That's not a free ride to say, well, nothing works, I'm just going to eat what I want. <laughs> No, that's where we got to think that this makes sense. And I know this works. And we don't know what people are doing behind the privacy of their own doors. But you know what I'm doing. I'm eating uh, everything I eat outside. I, I usually don't. <coughs> How often do you see me eating in general? You saw me yesterday, but I don't eat as much. Um, eating is a great time for fellowship and so on. It's a wonderful thing. But it's okay to eat private as well and just focus on your food. It's all right. That's another thing. It's not just what we eat, it's how we eat. Most people do not do this. They do not chew their food enough. We need to make sure we're chewing our food enough. I learned this one from some dogs. I, I, many dogs in my lifetime I've seen. And, and, and dogs know how to eat. Humans do not know how to eat. You need to chew your food. I put some food on the ground for a dog. The dog will stick that food in his mouth. And, and, and you won't hear another word until it's done. Other than him slapping up. You know, you'll never, ever, ever hear a dog bark with food in its mouth. And I see people talking with food in their mouth all the time. <laughs> we need to make sure we finish our food before we start talking. Chew your food the correct way. It's so important. People don't do that. Liquefying the food in your body before you drink, before you drink it or put it in your body. 
is going to make a big difference in your digestion. You don't have to buy expensive machines and, and these things to be healthy. You need to just follow what we've been given. And, and that's the guidelines and the instructions of what to eat. The food for man is found in Genesis 129, the Bible, fruits and vegetables. And how to eat it. We've been given teeth not just for a nice smile, but to chew our food. And we certainly do not have the capability on our own, with our own hands and our own teeth, uh, and, and to, to, to run and hunt down an animal and rip it open and just put its flesh in our body. And I'm glad we don't, because if we did, it wouldn't be pretty. And I'm sure some people would do that. But it, it's not uh, something... Uh, you know. Here's the bottom line. There's no excuse, no reason, from a nutritional standpoint, uh, from, from any standpoint other than you like to taste, and that's not even an excuse because nobody likes to taste. They like all the stuff they're putting on it to taste. There's no reason anyone should ever consume any animal products or animals included. A carcass is not food. It should never be food. People say, well, I just like the taste of that. Now, you like the taste of the sauce you're putting on it and everything else. You know, take that same sauce and put it on an orange and eat the orange. You like the texture of it. You've seen here, you can make the same texture texture with the fruits and vegetables, and it's just fine. Now, if you, the majority of the time, if you're doing this the right way, you can get away with doing that. And I'm not saying you have to be 100% raw vegan to be healthy. I know people that eat animals and seem healthy. To remember, just because you can get away with it doesn't mean it's ideal to do that. There's no reason we should know we should need to be doing alcohol, whether it's in the form of a, a beer or it's in the form of a kombucha. It's it's one it's the one of the most acidic things to the body. It's not healthy, and it makes us not think healthy. I I would say from from from. And traveling around and seeing what I see, the majority of people that drink alcohol are functional alcoholics. Yep. That's, right. That's what I would suggest. And people would get offended if they drink. Oh, I just have a beer. How dare you call me a functional alcoholic? Well, do you get drunk after that one beer? No. Why? Because you've worked up a tolerance to it. I haven't had a beer in 20 years. If I had a beer, I would get buzzed. Does that mean my system's weaker than yours? No. I just have not become a functional alcoholic. It's the same thing with with uh, all the other issues we need to work on and think about. Overeating and undersleeping. Overeating. The Bible calls gluttony a bad thing. Gluttony is a bad thing. <coughs> you know, somebody says, Paul, it's too much fruit bad for me, or it's too much this bad for me. Hence the words, too much. <laughs> if it's too much, it's too much. Now, it's a lot more difficult to drink too much water, but you can do it. But it's a lot more practical that somebody will drink too much of something that isn't good. So we, we need to think about what we're doing with the what we put in our bodies, and even think about it the day before. If you desire to do so, remember what I said, Dr. Frank Fish, you taught me. Uh, when you enjoy not eating as much as you enjoy eating, you know you've come to a certain place. I find it amazing how, from a spiritual standpoint, the average, not the average, but the, I see Christians come up to me they're completely unhealthy, they eat completely unhealthy, but they say they did like a 40-day fast. And then I see people that have been on a raw food diet for a long time and eating healthy and they struggle with doing a week. So we got to put it all together. We have the capability to do it all. Everyone in this room is very disciplined. People say to me often, I'm not disciplined enough to eat the way you eat. Well, first of all, you're not going to be successful if you talk like that, because your words do mean a lot. But, you know, I know people that tell me that they're not disciplined to eat the way I eat, and then they get up every single morning at 6 a.m. in the morning to feed their dog. <laughs> and walk their dog in the cold weather and the snow and everything. That takes more discipline than anything. See, we're all disciplined for what we truly love. We have to love feeling good more than we love the taste of that junk food or something else. So, uh, in this daylight diet, it's not just about not eating at nighttime. It's about first getting out of the habit of eating when it's dark outside. People say, well, what if we live in Alaska? Uh, well, you don't, so stop asking. <laughs> <laughs> but, but still, the ideal time to eat are between the hours of 9 and 5. Between 9 and 5. And, and try not to eat after that. The earlier you can stop eating before going to sleep, the better. What if you're still hungry? It's a habit hunger. 
if you've eaten enough food throughout the day. But even if it's a real hunger, you can do juices as much as you want. And I'm not talking about fruit juices. I never do straight up fruit juice. If it's a fruit juice, I'll add water to it to dilute the sugar. But when it comes to vegetable juices, maybe sometimes I have an apple or a carrot in there, but you can do that between your meals. That's fine. That's fine. And <clears throat> you'll, you'll sleep better. You'll definitely lose weight. You'll have more energy. Your dreams will be better. And every level, if we just stop eating late at night, it will improve our health tremendously. Tremendously. Uh, but it's the most difficult thing to ask somebody to do is to not eat late at night because that's what everything runs on in most people's lives. is food and nighttime. It goes hand in hand. And I give a lot of tips and suggestions in the book of how to avoid, uh, avoid these traps of eating late at night. Getting rid of the TV is one thing. Uh, people always invite you out to dinner and so on. I mean, I'll go and I'll get, I'll bring a juice with me or something or I'll go somewhere. You know, just eat enough during the daytime. The last thing you want is food at nighttime. And then you put that together with the formula for health book and, and just, uh, just uh, there's a program in here in the back of, of just the things I spoke about. about and there's even a, a daily eating schedule in here. Then with the with the, 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 the health according to the scriptures book. Show you in the Bible where everything I'm telling you is backed up in scripture. And people say, oh, but it says we can eat meat in the Bible. It says we can eat meat if you're a vegan. I never said the Bible said you have to be a vegan. You know, plan B of our creator is you're allowed to eat meat. It absolutely says it there. And it tells you how to do it, though. Don't overeat it. Eat it kosher. So it does, it does tell you how to eat meat. And then you're allowed to eat it. How many of you want to set up a plan B? Plan A is fruits and vegetables. Genesis 1.29. How many of you want to set up a plan A of our creator? Who created us and designed us to thrive. But we've messed it up. We've gotten rid of the food. We've gotten rid of the, the soil. The food's grown in and everything else. It's not what it once was. So now we can get uh, some supplements to make up for some of those things. And exercise is... Extremely important. Extremely important, getting enough exercise. How many of you exercise on a regular basis? With enthusiasm. How many of you exercise on a regular basis? Yeah. Right. Enthusiasm makes a difference. If you're not enthusiastic about it, you're not going to be able to do it long. Exercise is movement, but it's also more than that. Walking is exercise. That's not the type of exercise I'm talking about. So everyone walks. Now I'm talking about sweating. You need to break a sweat to be exercised. Your heart rate needs to be up. How many of you break a sweat every day doing exercise? See the difference there. You know, it doesn't only have to be cardiovascular exercise, there's a different type of exercise, but we need to get that exercise in. If you're doing cardiovascular exercise and not sweating, your heart rate is up, you gotta do a better job. If you're doing muscle resistance exercise and uh, it's a little too easy, you're not doing a good enough job. And if you're doing uh, stretching exercises uh, and your stretches aren't improving over time, probably not doing the most efficient job of that either. So. Hallelujah! <laughs>